Hi everyone and welcome to our final author session for this week. Um, I'm really excited today to welcome Wendy Orr. Wendy has written over 40 books, including one of my favourites, Nim's Island, which was adapted for a Hollywood feature film. Wendy's new book, which is soon to be released, is The Complete Adventures of Nim and it's celebrating Nim's 21st birthday. Um, so check it out soon. I also welcome back James Foley, who will be drawing and representing some of the ideas that Wendy will be talking about. So make sure you've got paper and pens ready. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Wendy is going to talk you through some writing challenges that you can do today or even take into next week over the Easter holidays. So over to you, Wendy. Welcome. Thank you. This is really fun. It's a bit different from anything I've done before. And so that's always good to be challenged. And it's really nice to see James again. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so I actually thought I would talk today about finding stories, um, st finding story ideas, because it might be a bit of a challenge at the minute. So I've been writing stories since I was seven and I'm going to have to pick up this little dog or else he's going to squeak the whole time. So I'm, he'll just sit down there. Um, that can be a story idea. <laughs> so I've been writing stories since I was about seven. And then when I grew up, eventually I became an author. So it's my job to write stories, which is pretty lucky, especially as most of the stories I write are for kids. But I'm going to think of a whole bunch of great things about stories. Now, the first one is everybody can write stories. You don't have to be an author. People who have other jobs, adults who have big jobs, they can still write stories or make up stories, even if they don't want to write them down. Kids who go to school can write stories, not just in school. Kids who are at home because they're always homeschooled or because most kids in the world are being homeschooled right now, they can write stories too. And the second great thing is you might think authors need to have a very adventurous lives, you know, to go out and find all these great story ideas. Well, that's not actually true. We have all the adventures we need with our imagination. So we don't need to go out to find them. We've got them all in our heads right now, which is pretty handy right now. And in fact, I've written a lot of my books, almost most of my books, when making up adventures in my head was the only way I could have adventures because I had a bad accident and I couldn't go for a walk outside. I couldn't drive myself to go somewhere. And so, Making up stories in my head was what gave me an escape and gave me hope. And that's the third really great thing about stories is reading stories and especially making up, writing our own stories stretches our imagination. And when times are tough, or scary or hard, the more we make up, even if they're crazy, impossible things, the more we imagine doing crazy things, wonderful things, heroic things, scary things, it makes us stronger and it gives us hope. So that to me is very, very important. Now, I'm going to just show you quickly Nim's Island, the story that some of you might know. And why I want to, there are two reasons I want to tell you about it today. One is that I first thought of this story when I was eight years old. And we were going to visit my grandparents and we passed an island on, and we were going on the ferry. And I thought, even though this was a teeny little rock of an island, maybe about the size of your school gym. I thought I would love to run away and live on an island all by myself. So I didn't actually do that 
because it was quite a lot of fun visiting my grandparents. But when we went home, I wrote a story about it. And then a long time later, when I was a grown up author, I thought about that story. And I thought about being the kid who wanted to live on an island. And I wrote Nim's Island. And that became a book, then it became two books, then it became three books, and it became a movie, and then it became two movies. And kids around the world write to me about it. But it's all because of a story that started when I was about eight. So I think it's important to remember that when you're thinking, well, I'm a kid, can I write a story? Of course you can. This second reason we're talking about Nim's Island right now is Nim, as I said, lives alone on an island with her dad and some animal friends. So she's homeschooled. So they use things just around the island that they happen to see for all their inspiration for stories and lessons. We're not gonna do lessons today. We're just doing stories. So that's what we are going to do. Now I have a little story treasure box here and I'm gonna quickly show you some of the things in it and then we're gonna choose one of them and really let us, let it inspire us. And maybe, maybe after this, your parents or the adults you live with could help you make a story treasure box with just random strange things you find in the house especially in the third drawer under the sink. Now, these are binoculars. Now, we're going to think about all sorts of things. One important thing to remember is no idea is wrong ever. But very quickly with binoculars, one of the things they represent is everything we see because everything you see can give you an idea. Even if you're in a bedroom, in an apartment, with no windows, you'll still have things to see. And put the binoculars away to look at a bit more later. Now, you can probably guess then that the bell represents everything we hear, which might be a sound like a bell, which could make you think of all sorts of things from school bells to timers, to cowbells, because this is a pretend cowbell, or everything you hear. It might be a conversation that you overheard. And it might be birds outside. You'll think of lots of things. And got a little packet of coffee. Now, coffee mightn't be the healthiest thing, but it's an easy thing to represent Everything you taste can sometimes give you an idea for a story. It'll remind you of something. And also when you're writing a story, you've got to put in things that your characters can see and hear, but you gotta let them eat sometime. And a fan. Now you can't feel this even over the magic of Zoom, but the fan is making a wind so I'm feeling the wind on my face. And you can think of lots of other things with that too. And the feather. I can imagine James would have lots of great ideas for a feather. What's the first thing the feather makes you think of, James? Um, it makes me, first of all, think of what, which bird it might have come from. Yes. And I would like to think that one is in eagles, but I don't think it is. <laughs> but because we get to use our imagination, it is an eagle, or it could be whatever you want. It could just make us think of flying, it makes us think of nature, it makes us think of any animal you want to think of. And here's another sense one, perfume, because as well as making you think of things, the sense of smell can be very interesting in your story. You might, you might want lovely perfume, you might want lovely baking smells, you might want stinky, rotten, dead shark smells, as maybe happens in Nim's Island. 
seashell might just make you think of walking on the beach or listening to the ocean. But if you think walking on the beach, it might make you think of another walk in the woods, in the sea. A card. Sometimes you can find an old letter and it reminds you of all sorts of things. So I can open this up and it's from a friend. We were friends when we were 13 and she sent me this card the other day. So it could remind me of living where I lived when I was 13 in the mountains. A little racing car, because you never need know when you need to get away in a racing car. Some mystery. This is a lid that I found on the ground on our farm once, and it's Finn's magic ointment. And it cures sores and weeps, uh, sores and wounds and old weeps. So if you have any old weeps, this is what you need. So to me, a bit of mystery, something you don't really know what it is, is a good thing to have in a story. So it makes you think, what if? What if it was real? What about some treasure? some old money, some jewels, a key. What does that old key open? A balloon. And a Band-Aid and a trophy. Hmm. The Band-Aid makes me think about problems. So I'm sorry, but no matter how much you love your character that you're writing about, you have to be mean to them. If you don't give them a problem, you don't have a story. You just have a nice feeling. So he can have a cut knee, he can have a sore toe, or she can have a problem that isn't really something to do with a Band-Aid, but a Band-Aid makes you think of the problems of what goes wrong for the character. What are they afraid of? What goes wrong for them? What don't they want to happen? And a trophy is all about winning, isn't it? So it makes you think about what the character really wants. What do they want to happen in your story? Do they have a feeling of winning or do they just want to get there? Or maybe they want something and they get something a little bit different. Or they get there in a different way than they expected. So those are some of the things in the box. But because we can't be here for 25 days, we're just going to look at the binoculars now. James is going to need a whole new piece of paper because the binoculars are going to make us think of so many things that they're going to start a story. Fantastic. <laughs> I'll be one second. Good. Yay. This is so much fun because I can't draw it all. And to see my ideas going into drawing is so much fun. Okay. Binoculars. Of course, one funny thing is if we look at them backwards, things are even farther away. If we were looking at them up close, sort of like having a magnifying glass, and a magnifying glass might make you think on a different line, like a detectives. So we said that binoculars think of just anything that we, they represent anything that we see. But what about what things binoculars make us think of? So, who might be using the binoculars? I'm going to pick on James because yeah. he doesn't, he hasn't done it before. So it's sort of more fun. <laughs> more fun <laughs> for me because James has to think of the answers. <laughs> <laughs> so who might be using a binoculars? Uh, a bird watcher. A bird watcher. All right. And we therefore have a character. Now, the really good thing about ideas is you all might come up with really, really different ideas and they're all right. So we've got a bird watcher. Now, <laughs> where is our bird watcher? Um, well, I suppose the most obvious place would be like a forest that's full of birds, but maybe we could put them somewhere 
more unusual where we wouldn't expect them to be. Yay! Um, what about um, on uh, an island that has a volcano? An island that has a volcano? James, where did you think of that one? I um, have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want something less nim? <laughs> I think that's very cool because, of course, by saying volcano, James has already added a bit of danger, problem, adventure. So once we decide where we're using the binoculars, we have the setting for our story because a story has to happen somewhere, even if it's a place you've made up. Now, we have to decide what they're looking for. Now, of course, it's obvious that a bird watcher is going to be looking for birds, but we're going to narrow that down a bit. Also, they might be looking for something that they want to see. So the trophy for the bird watcher is to see the rare pink spotted blue footed pelican. It's very rare. But we also might have that they are using the binoculars to spy out the problem that they don't want to see. So we can have it both ways. There might be a bad guy. There might be the volcano erupting. It might be the um, very, very rare pink spotted blue footed lion that eats these birds so and also happens to eat bird watchers so <laughs> we can go we can go whichever way we want but we are giving the character their problem now i think if they're just going to be wanting to watch that bird then of course we have to give them other problems so maybe which way are we going James, since they're a bird watcher, do you want them to be that their aim is to find this very rare bird? Um, I suppose so. It seems the most obvious thing, but then we need some sort of complication, don't we? We do need a complication. So whichever way, they're going to probably have to use the binoculars both ways, aren't they? They're going to yeah. have to look out for the bad guy, whether it's the volcano, the bad guys, tropical tourists, the just random bad guys who are invading the island or some force of nature what if they do find the bird but then turns out there's some other people on the other side of the island and they're stealing the bird to take it to some private zoo oh no i don't like those people at all no neither do i well i think we better fix them so i think that's a really that's a, a really great one and as we go along, I think, do you think we should leave it open like that, James, for the people to finish themselves at home? I think that's or, a great idea. And so what I'm thinking, though, is just another couple of hints. Like sometimes you're going along and think, this is a great idea. Okay, so they've spotted the bird and now they've seen those people. And the bad guys, well, what happens then? And so you might get a little bit stuck and you can go back to your story, your treasure idea box and you sort of look in it and think, hmm, well, I've got this magic potion. Maybe that's not it for this story unless maybe it makes me invisible. Um, we're stuck somewhere. Oh, what about this balloon? What if it's a hot air balloon? Can we get away, rescue the birds from the bad guys with the hot air balloons? Maybe, maybe these birds are actually really big and the birds, when we go to rescue them, the birds can actually help rescue us. Um, maybe there's other treasure. But the fourth great thing about writing stories is when we get these ideas, there's no idea that's wrong. Now, when you write a lot of stories, you'll find out you like some ideas better than others. You might write a story and think, oh, actually, that idea wasn't as good as I thought. I'm going to change it. But 
nothing's ever wrong. And you can have fun with making it as crazy as you like or as scary as you like. So there's really just two rules to writing a story. And first one is you are the boss. You are the boss of that story and you can make it do what you like. You can make your characters do what you like. Even if sometimes it feels like these characters, that crazy bird watcher, they're running away with you and they're choosing what to do. That's okay because it's really you. The second rule is you've got to have fun. Stories need to be fun. Not just because maybe you want somebody to read it, but because that's what stories are for, is to make you feel better. You've got to have fun in it and feel good about what's happening. Even if sometimes it's, aha, I didn't know what was gonna happen until I worked it out. And that is such a great feeling. So those are my two rules for writing stories. They sound like great rules, Wendy. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so James, we need to now capture everybody's challenges. So no I think worries. challenge number one, Wendy, would you agree, is to create your own treasure box for stories? Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, there are no rules for that treasure box. And then I think challenge number two is to if you want to continue the story about the bird watcher and his search for the mysterious pink spotted blue footed pelican. That's right. <laughs> and you don't know that one. You choose your adventure <laughs> and decide what's going to happen. And then challenge number three, I think is to, to create your own story. Use the things around you, use the items that you've put into your own treasure box and to definitely be the boss and have fun. I love those two pieces of advice, Wendy. Oh, excellent. Thank you for, for explaining that all out. That's exactly what I thought the challenges should be. Perfect. Now our final challenge, which has been a bit of a theme over the last two weeks, Wendy, <laughs> um, is for me to challenge you to think about something, but also the kids and people watching at home to challenge us to find them their ideal audience for their writing. So Wendy, if anybody in the world could read your writing, who would you choose? Well, I have been thinking about this because I have watched some of the other videos. And I realized that for me, it's the kid that feels nobody else is writing a story for them. And it's, so I don't know who these kids are, except when they write and tell me. But I feel, when I picture it, I picture it's a kid who's kind of lonely and just sitting there and reading a book and feeling like, yes, this is the story that I wanted to live in right now. And so for me, that kid or those kids or those adults are they're they're my ideal readers oh that's beautiful <laughs> and i'm sure those kids it would make a difference to those kids life that their day sitting and reading one of your stories oh well i hope so <laughs> well wendy thank you so much for joining us today um, it's been an amazing session and you've got some really great challenges for kids to continue with now. James, normally at this point, we draw a picture of who's coming next, but that's the end of our um, short series of author sessions. Until next time, we will be back. So, Wendy, I thank you for joining us. But James, a massive thank you to you. Um, you've been involved in every session that we've done. And... Yeah, you've brought everything to life for the authors involved and also everyone at home. So thank you. And yes, definitely head to thedescribe.com. Thank you, everybody watching. We hope you have a lovely Easter um, and do some great writing. And please remember to post your writing and your drawings. We've loved seeing them. We've shared lots of your stories on our Facebook page. And um, yeah, hopefully Wendy will jump on and read some of your work. Oh, definitely. To jump on and have a look at some of your drawings and your plans. Maybe we see the bird watcher 
in a comic strip as well. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that is cool. <laughs> All right. Thank you both. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye.